cool. Um, <clears throat> how's your day been, man? Everything's good, man. It's been a busy day. Are you tired yet? Is it just for uh, I am and... pretty wiped out. Yeah, I am. Uh, so all the good questions have gone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's all right. I, I don't mind doing them again. That's cool, man. Um, with me now is veteran punker Jared Reddick. Welcome hey. to welcome to England again. It's been a while. Hey. Good to be here. Been two solid years, you know. Awesome. Um, I got loads of questions, and I got literally no time to ask them all in. So my first okay. question, off the bat, break the ice. What has Bone for Soup done to not get on any U.S. festivals this year? <laughs> uh, it's you know, it's really weird. I you know, I I don't know, but it's the gift that keeps on giving because now all we do is just talk about the fact that we're not on any festivals and people love it. So, um, yeah, I don't. You just you start know. your own. I know, right? I think that's probably what we'll end up doing. Is just uh, yeah, just start the no. We'll do the nobody wants us festival you know you can open and close for yourself right you so do, do let's just get up there and play 1985 and call it a day definitely i was shocked and saddened that you weren't on there when we were young thing like what the fuck is all that about it was super weird but like i said you know we turned it into such a funny bit that i we probably got more out of it than we would have if we would have been on the festival the lineup is solid yeah. <laughs> It's pretty pretty great lineup, that's for sure. Um, I don't know how they kept it quiet for so long with that many people. Yeah. Well, it's funny. You know, I guess they added that second day, and the bands were like, uh, nobody told us, you know. Yeah. And, Is the uh, money there? Yep. Whatever. Right, yeah. But, uh, you know, I've never heard of a festival doing that, like the same lineup three days in a row. But, hey. What Only in have? Vegas. Yeah. Um, so I spoke to you about, oh, not – last christmas christmas before um about the new album which you said was already done um how come it's taken so long to get released is it because there's touring restrictions or was it just trying to get the sound and the the whole vibe of the album sorted or um well there was a bit of a delay in some of it just because um it, kind of a just I kind of hit like a bit of a rough patch, you know, um, with the whole quarantine thing. Uh, and I just kind of had trouble being productive from the recording front. You know, I just kind of had the last two songs hanging over my head and just didn't want to do it, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I eventually got it figured out. And, uh, and by then it was a matter of, uh, uh of, you know, our manager hearing certain songs and just being like, okay, this, this one, we, 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 they just wanted more time, you know? And, uh, I try not to ever play like the old school game, um, anymore. Like I, I think you should just release songs the day you record them and fucking put it out there. It's That's what I thought you were doing. Cause it was almost like one a month. And I thought you were going to stretch out the album yeah. over the course of a year. Cause everyone's attention spans these days are quite short. That's it, right? So, like, that's the reason we weren't going to do an actual album What in the first place was that, you know, I feel like if you do an album and you don't release everything as a single, then you nobody's really ever listens to You know, your hardcore fans listen to everything, but everybody yeah. else just gravitates towards the singles. And so I, um, yeah, I, but yeah, just they really wanted to try to set this one up right and 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 do do some fun stuff so anyway kind of just kept getting delayed kept getting delayed um but you know here we are it's finally coming out it's really great it sounds uh, this, this isn't a backhanded compliment but or uh, uh, whatever it is but it almost sounds like a coming of age album where mm. you've kind of just accepted that you're getting older and yeah everything's a bit harder <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, it, it's to the point of, of being able to to laugh about it, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's just it, right? I mean, getting old sucks, but everybody's doing it is 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 pretty much the most accurate statement of all time. It's We all start getting older the day we're born, right? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's, I, I feel like um, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of retrospect uh to this one that you know there's there's a bunch of reflection i guess is a better word of yeah just like kind of looking back and being 
like, hey, you know, I'm proud of us. We gosh darn did it. And, uh, and, and uh, but, you know, vibe wise, I, I'm, you know, I feel like we're, uh, we're still on point. Very much so. How do you, what do you think the longevity is, has been since the late, uh, you know, mid nineties? Um, well, first of all, we actually like each other. Uh, that, that helps. helps. That helps immensely. Uh, secondly, um, we know who we are. You know, we we know who Bowling for Soup is. And by by what I mean by that is, I'm very aware of like what our role is in our fans' lives. Like what you know that you know we're the band that you listen to after you've had a bad day, or the band that you listen to after you have a fight with your girlfriend or whatever. I'm 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 aware of that. And so I think you just sort of have to to always keep that in mind, you know, rather than I, I, I never saw us as being one of those bands that needs to reinvent ourselves. You know, I like I said, I say this all the time, but I don't buy a bad religion album thinking, oh, man, I hope this doesn't sound like bad religion. And I buy it because I know exactly what yeah. it's going to sound like, you know, and uh, I think Bowling for Soup kind of fits into that category, too. Definitely. There's a Bowling for Soup song for everyone everything in someone's life pretty much covered it by now huh yeah i think you're i think you're probably right probably there <laughs> yeah um a couple of standout tracks for me um by the singles are the more kind of slow anthemic personal songs um yeah. uh, best we can burnout and wouldn't change a thing they're my they're my three songs that have just kind of like jumped out at me um Nice. in this album and the lyric that i think is fucking brilliant is you could barely walk but i taught you to run i yeah. think that is my favorite lyric in in the entirety of the album man thank you thank you yeah man i'm 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 super proud of that song i that song was in my head for a really long time and i couldn't get it out like i i, I knew what i wanted it to sound like but i just couldn't figure it out and then just one day it just boom there it is and and i and it and it just worked so um yeah, I, I'm. I I really like best we can too. I I think that that I, I there's there's a sweetness to that song, that um, that is uh you know it's again it's just a it's just a good ballad. Yeah, it's basically we've been through everything and I'm still here, kind of. Right. Exactly. <clears throat> kind of thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. So one of my questions that I put out on Twitter or Facebook or whatever was you've already done the Val Kilmer song and now you've got a Brad Pitt song. Who yeah. is better? Oh, Brad Pitt's the best ever. Yeah, no question. Even after Ocean's 11, 12, whatever they're on now? Yeah, it doesn't matter. You've always got Snatch and Fight Club, you know, to throw at anybody who wants to talk smack on the Ocean's movies. Shit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, going back to lyrics, have you got a favorite lyric on the album? Um... I like the uh, we've drank a beer on every continent but one. I like that line. Is that a bucket list thing? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I think it sort of accidentally happened. Um, honestly, man, I I like I I really really just overall like the song "Kill Him with Kindness," um, and uh, so I. I lyrically, I just absolutely love that song. Um, and that's already out, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, there's some, there's some pretty good lyrics on this one, right? This is, this is one of my favorite Bowling for Soup albums and I've been there from, from the start. Yeah, I think, thank you. But I, and I, I predicted that that's what people are going to say. I predict <laughs> that this album will be like for the people who swear that drunk enough to dance album and they may be right uh i think this will be their second favorite definitely this is just uh just on a personal note and a grand kind of coming of age well not coming of an age because it's so many years ago um but it's that whole kind of like accepting where you're at kind of thing and i i, yeah. I vibe with that because i've i've been there from the start as well and i can i can appreciate you know the bitch song or sucker punch but i can also appreciate something like you know I wouldn't change a thing kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's about life too. It's, it's, it's that kind of, 
you get asked that question a lot when you do a lot of interviews. Like, what would you change? What would you tell yourself? You know, like I would tell my younger self, stay the course because your life is awesome when you get to be 50, you know, like just, you know, I, I, I wouldn't change a thing because I wouldn't want anything to be different. You know, I, I love my kids. I love my wife. I love my career, my band, you know, my everything. So, um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't go back and try to fix anything because it, it would derail everything, right? Yeah, get a different, different timeline and all that type of mm -hmm. weird shit. <clears throat> yeah. Um, you've also been doing stuff, some stuff with uh, Thomas Nicholas, who's like a super solid dude as well. Dude, uh, one of my best friends now. It's pretty crazy. We, uh, we definitely hit it off, and um, we talk every day, and... <laughs> He, uh, yeah, he's coming to visit me right after I get back from this trip, actually. He's going to come to Texas and come hang for a few days. So, uh, yeah. Great. Has that thing just been quite a new thing or has it been kind of like you'll bump into him like every so often? And No, man, I never met the guy. And then uh, he came in, he was coming in to do um, a live episode of my podcast, Jarrett Goes to the Movies. And so we started talking leading up to that. And we're already like, you know, making each other laugh and stuff. And then he came in for that deal and, and we hung out. And then, you know, again, just very, very fast friends. Like, you know, just um, yeah, all really, really quickly. He's, you're right. He's just such a good guy. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked to be doing stuff with him. He's like, he will go out the way to do things. Mm -hmm. um, I'm from Cardiff, but he will drive like half an hour to my radio station and do a live session. Yeah. And I'm just like, I can It's crazy. Yeah, he, um, yeah, he, he was in, um, we were, we did a little acoustic tour of the Northeast recently and we were in Baltimore and, uh, he was also in Baltimore doing a screening of rookie of the year. And he was like, Hey, can I come open for you guys? So that the audience got to see a surprise movie style um yeah he works he works hard but he's really down to earth as well did you lose me yeah i did a little bit very very down to earth yeah he's uh sorry <laughs> it says my internet connection is unstable am i back yeah you're back man <laughs> all right all good <laughs> Yeah, well, you know what? Maybe next time uh, when you come and do your acoustic tour, you can bring him with you or um, or if a band drops out on the next UK tour, just bring him yeah, in. Yeah, just bring him, yeah. Yeah, plus his music's actually really good. Like, I, I, I dig it. I agree. I, his, he's, and he's just, he's a great performer, a great entertainer. And uh, yeah, I, I totally agree. I did not expect him to be as good as he is, actually. To be no. Honest. Because normally, you know, because all actors want to be musicians and all musicians want to be actors. Yeah. And most yeah. of the time it doesn't go well when they start to switch. Uh, but but he's, he does both quite quite nicely. Yeah, it's a nice balance. <laughs> yep, for sure. Awesome, Jared. I won't keep you much longer because your internet connection is just dying. <laughs> it's just the worst, huh? I'm so sorry. It's all right, man. Um, Thanks, Novatel London. Oh, that's, that's the reason why. Novatel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love the album. Like I said, it's probably my second favorite Bone for Soup Thank album you. now. Um and do you know how much of it is gonna make it into the set list when you're over here next, or are you still trying well, to figure that out? I'm I'm well aware that people come to hear the hits, you know. Um, and I I don't go see bands hoping that they're gonna play a bunch of new shit. Like I always want to hear what I want to hear. So uh, I'd say two or three songs, you know, I, I would think that we would do Brad Pitt for sure. And then, uh, you know, maybe getting old sucks. Maybe, maybe one other one. Uh, I feel like it doesn't give the songs a bit of ju live justice. <clears throat> maybe. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Now I'm losing you. Just, this is just the fucking worst time. <laughs> yeah. There I am. I'm so sorry. Go. As, 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 it's all good, man. It's, it's hotel Wi-Fi. Yeah. Damn it. Um, yeah. Jarrett, thank you again for having the chat. I love the album, and uh, I'll catch you in just over a month, I guess. Yeah, man. Thank you so much, dude.